Good evening, this is Apostle Brian from Glo of Global Healing Ministries. And as you can see, it's kind of dark in my background. And it's dark in my background because here in Columbus, Ohio, we've had some storms and we lost power. They are currently working on it. However, uh, God, a couple weeks ago, had me buy something that provides me to have this light in the background. And, and so we're going live uh, for you tonight and dig deep Bible study, Global Healing Ministries, and I'm glad to be here. So let's get started with prayer. Spirit of the living God, Lord, we thank you right now for your grace and your mercy, and we praise you and we lift you up and we magnify your precious holy name. Lord, I just ask right now that the words of my mouth represent the meditations of thine heart and that everyone under the sound of my voice receive what I have to say through you from you in their heart. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We have been talking and about evil spirits, the 13 evil spirits that are mentioned by name in the Bible from the Lord. And, and so as I just knocked some down, uh, we in the dark, but as, uh, as we begin, you know, we have talked about, uh, the strong man and how these spirits take up strongholds in our lives. And so the first thing we have to do is bind up in, uh, the strong man and, and then destroy his goods, uh, because that's what the strong man wants to do to you. And so we have found that we have dealt with the spirit of bondage, the spirit of fear, the deaf and dumb spirit, uh, which we found comes out only but by prayer and fasting, the spirit of heaviness, the spirit of infirmity, the spirit of jealousy, the spirit of divination and familiar fruits, which is witchcraft, and the perverse spirit, and we talked about the spirit of whoredom, the spirit of haughtiness. And last week we talked about the, sp the lying spirit, which brings us to the spirit of the Antichrist. Number 12, the spirit of the Antichrist, which can be found in 1 John chapter 4, beginning at verse 3. I'm going to start reading tonight at verse 1, though. 1 John chapter four, verse one. And I have purpose in that. Amen. And when you are there, I see one heart coming up. Uh, I got a few people watching. If you're trying to find it, I'm giving you a few moments to find it in your Bibles uh, so that we can move forth in this, in this discussion. Uh, if you have questions, please uh, put them in the comments bar uh, and I will see them. They'll pop up and I'll be able to answer your question. Amen. And so the Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Now, 1 John is not the book of John. That's the fourth uh, book of the New Testament. 1 John is, uh, is towards the end of the New Testament. Amen. Uh, there, are first, there are three books in 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, but we're in 1 John uh, chapter 4. I've uh, seen a lot of people flash, so I'm thinking you're ready now. Okay, and so it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye, chapter verse 2, hereby know ye the spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of the Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it is it in the world. It's it's funny today because I was on this on the on on Facebook today, and there was a person that said, uh, "How do you tell Christians that?" Jesus is fake and that God is real. My only response to that, and, and, and the guy responded back to something somebody else said, okay? He responded back to something somebody else said. I don't remember exactly what it was, but my only response to that was, and there was another guy said, yeah, guy, you got a long way to go. I said, I'm going to be praying for the two agnostics on this, on this, on this post because those are people who do not believe Jesus is real. Agnostics do not believe Jesus actually existed. Here's the problem. If you've never experienced Jesus in your life, you have a reason to doubt. Only because you want to. 
because Jesus is as real as you and I. Without Jesus, you and I wouldn't even be here. It's that simple because he died so that we would have a right to be here, to have an opportunity to receive complete and total salvation through him. The Antichrist is, uh, these Antichrist spirits that we have are uh, the type of spirits that, uh, that are seek to irritate you. Okay, they want to irritate you. They are always against Christ. They they are vexed by deception, disturbs gatherings of Christ, seek to rule and afflict. Their whole objective is to throw you off. They don't want you to believe in God. It's just really that simple. And this is why it is important. You know, I I, I was I, you know I was with I was talking to someone last night, and I've talked to a couple of people here recently. But the one question I wanted to ask them before I could help them in their uh, with their particular situation is: is do you know that Jesus loves you? Do you believe in Jesus? Because if you don't believe in Jesus. If you hesitate with me and tell me, well, I'm not sure Jesus is who he is, well, that's the first place we need to start with working and dealing with your problem. Because we can't start praying for demons to leave you alone and you don't believe in the one who can get rid of the demons. So we need to understand that people who see, you know, these people that like to act like, oh, yeah, yeah, I got you around, thank you, and just want to be irritating to you, they don't really believe in God. They're playing like they believe in God because they don't want you to say anything to, to anybody else about God in their presence. So they try to act like they're okay and you and them are on the same team, but they're not on your team because they wouldn't have to act it out that way, okay? They're trying to be irritating. Uh, people who consistently, who do like the guy on Facebook and the two guys on Facebook today who speak against Jesus Christ, they're not... They're not of Christ. They are of the Antichrist. Their whole objective is to get you not to believe in Christ. Okay? Uh, they, the people who, uh, I've seen people who, because they don't agree with something somebody does, and the first thing they do is they, they, they this guy actually, there was a, it was on Facebook a while back, this guy actually walked up into the church down the middle aisle and began to disturb the service because they weren't doing it with what he thought Christ was. That's not Christ-like. Even if somebody is getting it wrong, that is not the way to approach it, okay? Because the first thing you're going to do if you approach things like that because you don't agree with what they're doing in that manner, okay, in that setting, the first thing you do is you turn everybody else off in the room. They ain't hearing you because they've been listening to this person and you cannot attack a person if they feel like something has been helping them even if it's the wrong thing. So you have to do it in a orderly manner, okay? Uh, there are times when people will say stuff uh, in, in, in their pastors, teachers, Bible study teachers, for, uh, 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 Sunday school teachers, they'll say something that's not of God and there is nothing wrong with at that moment questioning them, okay? But you, in a Bible study setting, in a Sunday school setting, you you cannot question them in a worship service setting, okay? That's not the proper place to do it. But you can question them immediately afterwards. You can't ask them if you're sitting at dinner and, and, and they come up with, and you come up with, well, wait a minute, you said something earlier that, that just didn't work for me. That's the time to do that kind of stuff. But you don't do it uh, in a disorderly fashion and people who do that in a disorderly fashion, they are trying to disturb the service. Okay. And because pastors don't always get everything, don't always say everything right. I, I'm telling tell you right now, I used to sit up, I'd be sitting up and, and, uh, be doing our, our offering and, and reciting Luke, Luke and six and 38. And, and I'll skip and run it over. And my church would say, and run it over. And I just like, yeah, right. And I'm like, and run it over and keep going. That's a different setting. That's a different thing. My church understood that I had no problem with that and that we should do that. Okay. But there are certain types of disruptions in church that have nothing to do with God. And their whole objective is, is they are the antichrist. They are of the antichrist. Okay. Uh, seeks to rule. When a person 
tries to seek to rule and everything that they are basing their ability to rule on, first of all, they can't rule. I can't rule you. Okay? That's the spirit of the Antichrist. Because I may, you may consider me your pastor, I cannot rule you. That's an ungodly soul tie. Because if I'm ruling over you, okay, it's the difference between when the Bible says obey those who have rule over you. Those people have a responsibility to conduct God's word and give you God's word. But I can't rule and say you can't talk to somebody. I can't rule because this person doesn't agree with what I say or, or whatever the case may be and say, don't you ever contact them. You're not to have any of it. You can't, I can't do that. That's not of God. That's of the Antichrist. Okay? Because the first thing that happens when somebody falls is we're supposed to pray for them. And we're supposed to be there to provide spiritual counseling. But we're not supposed to be there to, to tell them what they ain't got no business doing. We're not supposed to, as a pastor, I should never tell you not to have any contact with anyone. Okay? I should tell you to be cautious if I think that the person means you no good. That's a different story. Okay? But this thing where if a pastor thinks that just because he's pastor, he ought to be able to tell you who you can and cannot have contact with. He ought to be able to tell you where you can and cannot go. No, that's not a pastor's job. A pastor's job is to correct and advise. Okay. All right. If you ask me something and, and I feel like, you know, uh, we should, I shouldn't be doing this. That's a different story. I turn my light up here. It looks like I'm getting a little dark up in here. All right. But that's a different story, okay? I need you to understand that. So everybody that will come up to you and say they love the Lord, don't love God, okay? It's that simple. You can't believe every spirit that comes at you. You got to try the spirits and see whether or not they are God. How do you do that? Well, the first thing you have to do is you have to ask yourself, what is that spirit asking you to do? Is that spirit asking you to do something that lines up with the word of God? Or is it asking you to do something that's contrary to the will of God? This is why it is important for you to know the Bible for yourself. This is why it's important when the Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, unto God, unto God, not unto the pastor, not unto your BFF, but unto God, a workman who needeth, not, who rightly dividing the word of truth, who needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You need to do that. That's important. Okay. It's not, you can't just, uh, like I said before, it's important that you read the Bible. If you have trouble, I mean, there are people out there who will tell you in a minute, I get stumped, tripped up reading the King James Version of the Bible. I don't. There's the New Living Translation, which I think is a very good translation. I do not agree with the NIV because they take things out. If you have trouble reading and listening to a Bible, almost every version of the Bible out there can be found where someone will read it to you. Pray.com got, got uh, what's his name, uh, 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 James L. Jones reading the Bible to you. You version has somebody reading the Bible to you. And sometimes that's a really good avenue. I had a preacher this weekend that I heard said that he was listening to what he was going to preach from and, and he caught something that he had never caught reading. You got to know the Bible. Because you can't try every spirit by the spirit if you don't know what the Bible is telling you to do. They can tell you anything. And if it sounds good, you run with it. So you got to know the Bible, okay? If it comes in the flesh, if a person comes to you and they are in the flesh, meaning a physical person, all right? You need to know that they're confessing that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. They can't tell you, they can't tell you, or oh, you know, but Jesus was just a spirit. No, you need to know that Jesus, they need to know that Jesus actually walked above us. If they don't believe that, they're not of God. That's the Antichrist. That's an Antichrist spirit. Okay? I need you to get this because it is very important. Because the bottom line is, is the Antichrist exists today. This is the reason why 
uh, and, and, and I don't care if people think I'm attacking it, but this is a problem I have with the Muslim religion because they look at Jesus as not being the son of God. Antichrist spirit, period, cut and dry. You can't deny Jesus and who he was. You can't call Jesus a prophet. He was not an ordinary prophet. Jesus was not an ordinary man. Jesus was more. He was the son of Christ. The, he had the, he is the, the son of the living God. He's the spirit of God. Okay. In him, in the flesh, he is God in flesh. He could do things that none of us could ever do without the use of the power of his name. I need you to grab and hold on to that. It is important that you understand that every spirit that you're going to run into, whether it be in the flesh or whether it be in your thoughts, is not going to be of God. And you need to know how to check them out. Check them out. Spirits that give you thoughts, that try to influence you to do things, it should influence you to follow the word of God. And you can't know whether they're false unless you are reading God's word and know God's word. People who are uh, not of God are not going to confess that Jesus is come in the flesh. They're not going to believe it. And you need to know that about them. That's all you got to ask them. Do you believe that Jesus walked over in the flesh? And if they be like, well, um, um, well, yeah, yeah, no, no, ain't no, yeah, no. Jesus is not this or that he, uh, or in between. There's no in the middle with Jesus. Either you know him or you don't. It's that simple. There's no if with Jesus. Okay. Jesus is very clear in who he is. And he's very clear in the fact that he loves you. Okay. Anybody tell you that you don't need to pray about something because God talked to them about it? That's, 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 that's the Antichrist. Okay. I know when God is talking to me, but I don't ever tell a person not to pray about what I might be giving them advice to do. I'm going to tell them, you need, this is what I feel. I feel in my spirit right now, but you need to pray and ask God for yourself to know for yourself. And if you do pray, you will know. Okay, it's that simple. But you don't get to run around here and tell me I can't pray because, I, I, you know, it's, it's just mm -mm, that that don't work for me. That's an antichrist spirit. Okay. There's never going to be a point in time that the, that the Lord will sense that the, in the flesh, somebody will tell you something that you cannot back up in God's word. You're in the flesh that somebody will tell you that they don't believe that Jesus walked this earth and then on the same in the same breath tell you you spoke that God is telling you to tell telling them to tell you something. Nope, that ain't God. That's the Antichrist. Okay. Listen at what it says. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. This means there is someone out there. There is a spirit that will try to influence you. There is a person that will come to you who doesn't confess to Jesus in the flesh that will try to influence you. And I told you on many occasions that their whole objective is to influence. That's the demon's objective. Demon is the spirit of the Antichrist. That, that spirit and its demons come to uh, influence you. And so this is why they would want to be a disturbance. This is why they would want to irritate you, okay? Because they want to throw you off your game. This is why they want to afflict you in different ways. This is why they are who they are, because they do not believe Jesus is who he said he was. Antichrist. Okay, listen, we're coming up uh, in about 20 minutes and, and I'm going to start going back over uh, what we've already dealt with because I want to spend a little time in some areas. OK, uh, sp particularly the spirit of fear. We talked about the spirit of bondage. OK, and that it has that it comes from Romans 8 and 15 and that it is the its fruit is anguish bitterness captivity oppression addictions lust spiritual blindness and spiritually bruised 
But I, 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 uh, then you have, we talked about the spirit of fear. First Timothy one and seven. It is the number one problem most Christians have because fear brings about worry. Fear brings about our feeling, brings about feelings of inferiority. Fear brings about uh, us being fright and it allows the demons to torment us in our night season. You are most vulnerable to this spirit fear at night when you're supposed to be trying to rest in God, when you're trying to rest. And the reason you're so, you don't get rest is because fear is working in your life. They're torment, it's tormenting you in your dreams. And it's sometimes it's in your subconscious dreams and you don't even really know that you're being attacked in your dream. Nightmares, dread, timidity, anxiety. Timidity is not just being someone who's like, well, I don't know, I don't know. It's not that person. That's not just that person that that's always uh, backing up. Sometimes timidity is just somebody who's afraid to make a decision, afraid to say, well, you know, this is what I think. Afraid to speak up for themselves. Anxiety, okay, attacks you. You know, uh, somebody. Uh, just because there are people who can't even go outdoors because anxiety has gripped them. Okay. Inadequacy. You don't, you know, you don't, oh my God, you don't think that you're good enough in for people in certain areas of your lives. All of these things, you don't, you don't think you're good enough. And that's, that's not true. Okay. Phobias, people who have severe phobias about things. Okay. And you know what these phobias are. I'm, I'm not going to list them, you know, but you got people that have fear of heights, fear of, of tight places, fear uh, of, of this, fear of that. that. That's a phobia. God didn't give you that, okay? Faithlessness. Can't Don't have faith in nothing. Can't get nothing done because they don't believe nothing can get done, okay? Apprehension, terror. All of these types of things come from fear. And I need you to get this about fear because fear is leads you into other areas, okay? Fear leads you into bondage because you help, you're held captive and captivity is operating in your life and now you're held captive because of fear which comes from bondage. So you got two of them working in your life and it's killing you, it's driving you crazy. Deaf and dumb spirit. Sometimes fear can put you in such a place where you want to commit suicide. Fear, uh, uh, and, and, and you got you, you feel dumb in everything that you do. You got madness, inferiority, senility, deafness, convulsions, and, and seizures. This is the deaf and dumb spirit. Mark 9 and 25. Okay? You have the, we have the spirit of heaviness. This is one that causes a lot of people problem because of the main, the one in here that caused that, that's rejection. You feel rejected by people in your life. You feel rejected. The story of your life becomes rejection and, and despair and hopelessness. And you're lonely all the time. Loneliness, discouragement, self-pity, gloom, sorrow, sadness. You're not even mourning, grief. I mean, there are people who mourn people that die and, and, and they never get over that mourning. And I know it's difficult for people to understand that the Bible said that Moses pointed out that when Moses died, he allowed the people to mourn for 30 days and then they went on with their life. I'm not saying that you can't remember people in your life. Okay. I'm not telling you that. Don't get confused with that. Okay. Honor and respect what they meant to you in your life. But to go into deep despair or deep mourning all over again on the day that they died or on their birthday or what have you, that's not of God. Okay, this is why Jesus told uh, in the parable, he was telling the people, let the dead bury their bed. Let the dead, dead bury their dead, spiritually dead, because he, needed you, he needs you to move forward and do something different. Okay, spirit of infirmity. All right. Luke 13 and 11, Isaiah was heaviness, uh, 61 and 3, uh, but the spirit of infirmity is Luke 13 and 11. Sickness. There are some people that get so deep in mourning that it causes them depression and now they're sick. 
Wow, look at how all of these, I, I, I'm, I'm just running down. I'm at number five, and I'm showing you how all five of these connect to the one place that started with fear. Sickness, frailty, maladies, infections, fevers, viral infections, bacterial infections, ailments and illnesses. Can you, you know, when the pandemic started, I heard somebody say today, the pandemic started, people ran out and bought all the toilet paper. Now, I got to be realistic here. Buying up all the toilet paper, was that going to keep you healthy? I'm just asking. Because toilet paper ain't never healed nobody. It ain't never got rid of no infection. It ain't never wiped up no, uh, you cough, uh, it, it, it's not going it, to, you can wipe it up, but it ain't going to disinfect it. But people ran and bought up toilet paper, trying to be healed, trying to protect themselves from the pandemic. I don't know what that was about, Okay. That's a worry thing. That's a fear thing. That's an inadequacy thing. Spirit of jealousy. Numbers 5 and 14. Jealousy, murder, anger, rage, wrath, revenge, spite, suspicions, competition, hatred, cruelty, coveting, and selfishness. Mm. Why would you get mad at somebody because you can't do what they can do? Celebrate them. Because I guarantee you, whatever you can get angry over somebody being better at you at something, you're better at them than in something else. You know what? You want to know what that is? You're better than them at being you. There is nobody better at being you than you. And that's all the reason you need not to be jealous of somebody. Because I'm the best me possible. I just got a question. If a person does something special on a day of when their loved one dies or their birthday every year, is that against God? Uh, let me see, see. God, I don't know if I'm asking the question correctly. If it takes you away from God, based on the question that you asked, if it takes you away from God, then... That's creating a problem in your relationship with God. I'm not, that's why I'm telling you, it's nothing wrong with remembering, but there are, I said, going into a state of deep depression on the day of this thing, of this instance. There are some people who just can't, I, I, I had a person tell me years ago that uh, uh, they were coming to church, that somebody was coming to church with them every Sunday. And on the day that, I don't know whether it was a mother or a sister, but this person died, this person went into a deep depression and couldn't come to church. That's wrong. That's what I'm talking about, about these type of depressions. I'm not telling you that you shouldn't remember, remember them, but it shouldn't bring you to tears every time you think about somebody that died. Okay, that's another thing, okay? Hope I answered your question. If I don't, uh, I think pretty much everybody watching me around know, knows how to contact me. Call, give me a call. Spirit of divination and familiar spirits, mediums, conjurers, astrologies, astrology. 99% of the people in this world will look at their astrology, their sign. And they always talk about, they're, I'm compatible. They feel like they're compatible with some of what you just did. When you did that, you opened up the door for witchcraft to operate in your life, for warlocks to put, and, 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 and people who do those type of things to put curses on your body because you just opened up a door, a window. It's witchcraft. Stay away from it. Deviners, witches, hypnosis, mimicry. Stay away from that stuff. Don't let nobody hypnotize you. If you let somebody hypnotize you, you just opened yourself up to a world of hurt from every demon that war operates in, from in, in, in divination. Perverse spirit, error, foolishness, fretting, self-lovers, sexual perversions, lewdness, false teachers, perversions, rebellion. All of those things, Isaiah 19 and 14 and and. Uh, spirit of divination was Acts 16 and 16 and 2 Kings 2 and 21 and 6. Okay, and, and we're coming close to the end and, and we're almost done. Spirit of whoredom, adultery, idolatry, lovers of the world, lovers of position, sexual seduction. Okay, idolatry. 
can really be covered in all of these. It's called loving, idolizing something that is not of God. If sex is more important to you than God, that's a problem. Okay? If what's going on at, at, at the bar is more important to you than your relationship with God, that's a problem. If you got to be somewhere else other than when you're supposed to be spending time with God, that's a problem. That's idolatry. The spirit of haughtiness, pride, biggest one, scornful, mockers, braggarts. Idol whoredom comes from Hosea 4 and 3. Haughtiness comes from Proverbs 16 and 18. Self-righteousness, domineering, egotistical, uh, um, what is it? Uh, contention, vanity, stubbornness, braggarts. This domineering spirit that comes out of the spirit of haughtiness. It's just wrong. You ain't, we ain't supposed to dominate nobody. That's an ungodly soul tie. The only thing that should dominate our thoughts is God, Jesus. Lying spirit, lies, flattery. That comes from 1 Kings 22 and 22. Lies, flattery, uh, imaginations, exaggerations, exaggerations, strong delusions, vain babbling, profanity, profanity, Pro, not finity, profanity. I don't know why I couldn't get that out. Profanity, old wise tales, superstitions. When the superstitions is split in the pole. Come on, man. Step on a crack, broke your mama's back. Really? But did your mama's back, back ever break because you stepped on a crack? But because you said that and opened yourself up to that, you opened yourself up to that lying spirit that the next time you need to tell the truth, you might tell a lie because you opened up a window and gave them authority to operate in you. This is what I'm talking about, about opening these windows to these demonic spirits. You give them the authority to operate in you when you fall into these things, okay? Antichrist, what we talked about tonight, 1 John 4 and 3, seeks to irritate. Does not, it, it, they are against Christ. They're vexed by deceptions, disturbed gatherings, Seeks to rule and afflicts. Listen, next week we're going to be talking about the seducing spirit. This is the last of the 13. They will always be on our YouTube site, Global Healing Ministry. All right. Look at, at the 13 spirits and you can look at each one of these over and over and over again until they get in your spirit because they need to be in your, in your spirit so that you can have a discerning spirit so that you will know when they're trying to approach you and you will be able to say, okay, I, I got this. I, you can go Matthew 18 and 18. I bind you up in the in in, in Jesus name, and I and that and that because what I bind on earth, Lord, you bind in heaven and what I loose on earth, Lord, you loose in heaven. And you can ask him to do it and he'll take care of it. I know. I hope somebody with it last night. Trust me when I tell you. You want to know what these are. Because you want to be ready to fight. You have been armed with this arsenal called, that's found in Ephesians 6 and 12. When the Bible teaches us uh, that, there, that, you know, what it tells us. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of doctors of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God, verse 13, that ye may be able, to be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. If you don't know what you're standing against, you can't stand. Okay? It says stand, therefore having your loins girded up about with truth. You need to know the words so you know the truth. Having on the breastplate of righteousness, your righteousness comes from having God in your life and being a friend of Jesus. And your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace, a peace that surpasses all understanding that comes only from the Lord. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye may be able to quench all fiery darts of the wicked. And taking on the helmet of salvation, that shield of faith is the Bible. So when these darts start coming with these demons and all this stuff, you can come back and say, I know that demon. I've heard about it and I can rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Why? Because Bible says that I can bind up any demon on earth. Oh, come on now. Fiery darts and take the helmet of salvation, which is the power of the Holy Spirit and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. You need to know these things, man. You need to know this stuff so that you can be safe. 
This has been Dig Deep Bible Study with Apostle Brian of Global Healing Ministries. God bless you, and we'll see you on Sunday at 11 a.m. Same place. Good night.